And welcome everyone to a first Power 36 chat of the 2020-21 season. Well, the Final Four would have been uh, over the last couple of days. We would have gotten back Tuesday. National Championship game would have been Monday. We all, of course, uh, desperately missing March Madness. It is now officially over uh, because we are past the point of when it would have occurred. Uh, before we start on this, I uh, want to just wish everyone um, that you stay safe, you practice social distancing, and hopefully sooner than later, we will be on the other side of this. Uh, but I'm an optimistic person, so I am hopeful that we will have college basketball beginning in November when it is supposed to start, and that we will have a normal, I don't know what that new normal will look like, but a normal basketball season in terms of games and so on and things that we can cover. Uh, there's still plenty of news out there. There are plenty of players that are entering the transfer portal. There are players who are declaring for the NBA draft outright. Uh, there are those that are keeping their options open. And as it stands now, we don't know what the draft process will look like. Clearly, there will not be a draft combine in May. There is not going to be um, any kind of deadline in May. Uh, that, even though it hasn't been officially stated, it's pretty obvious uh, the draft has not been moved yet from late June, but I can't see a scenario well that, where that would occur. Clearly, the NBA is waiting to see what happens if it's able to conclude its 1920 season in some form or fashion, June, July, or August. Uh, so my gut is that the NBA draft won't occur before at the earliest, late August or September, which would mean rosters are going to be in flux. Players are going to have to make decisions without having any kind of workout, any kind of face-to-face -face contact with a general manager. It's all going to be done through Zoom or FaceTime or other forms virtually. So they're going to, it's going to be hard for these players to make these decisions. And that's why I think we are in a unique situation. I think a lot of players will end up returning to college basketball because of the unknown of the NBA, the salary structure, what is going to happen, how this is all going to shake out. So. With that being said, we had to put together our Power 36, our first edition. This is going to change a lot, obviously, over the next six months. Uh, but So I'm basing this on what we know at this time, this snapshot in time. And this is as of, uh, I put this to bed uh, on Tuesday night, April 7th. Uh, so we are taping this. We're live with you now here on Wednesday, April 8th. But uh, I just said, okay, at this point, who do we know is in? Who do we know is out? Who do we think is going to stay in? Who we aren't sure about? Some players have announced where they're transferring. Some have not. So with that being said, I want to take some questions here. First off, let's look at this. Gonzaga. I'm going to defend some of these and I'll take your questions here. Uh, Gonzaga, first of all, uh, you can go to March Madness 365, my podcast. I talked to Corey Kispert. I think he's going to come back. I think Philip Petrusif is going to come back. I think Joel Ayayi is going to come back. I don't know about Jalen Suggs. They're big time recruit. Uh, Drew Timmy, Anton Watson, they've got enough pieces, a lot more than a lot of other teams, uh, that, you know, they look the part like they could be back where they were at the end of this past season, which is a number one seed, a number one team. So at this juncture, you got to look at who's returning. That could change, but right now I feel pretty comfortable. The same with Baylor. They're not getting gutted like a lot of these other teams right now. And as of now, Jared Butler is staying. And he could enter the Big 12 as the Big 12 Player of the Year. Um, so I've got them as another possible number one at the two spot. Villanova Creighton, Creighton Villanova. You could debate how you want to go with this. But Villanova, uh, I've talked to Colin Gillespie, uh, talked to Marcus Zagorowski, who's recovering from a knee injury. Both these guys, despite Villanova likely losing Sadiq Bay, we'll see if Jeremiah Robinson Earl stays in. They've got a great core, guys sitting out like Brian Antoine at, at uh, Villanova. Creighton has their core back with a healthy Zagorowski, Tyshawn Alexander. Both these teams get a share of the Big East. I think they're going to be right there. Iowa at the five spot. Luca Garza told me, I mean, he didn't say officially he's coming back, but everything he was saying sounded like he's coming back. So he could enter the season as the National Player of the Year front runner. Joe Wieskamp. Uh, Toussaint, they, they've got all the pieces right there to have a Big Ten title-type team in Iowa City. Right behind them is Wisconsin. 
Micah Potter for the whole year, Demetri Tice, uh, Brad Davison, Nate Reavers. They only lost Brevin Pritzel, a good recruiting class coming in. They finished the season strong. So another team that returns a lot. And that's going to be such a key next season. Experience. Teams that got old, okay, those teams are going to be in a great position. If they were old and stayed old, stay old, stayed old, they're going to be in a great position. Then after that, you get to a lot of teams that we're speculating on. Kansas, we don't know about Devon, uh, Devon Dotson yet, but Garrett, McCormick, uh, they're going to be fine. Michigan, don't know about Livers. They lost Teske and uh, Simpson. And by the way, I broke all this down on NCAA.com. So if you want to hear, see all my reasons, I'm just giving you a quick snapshot of these different teams. Great recruiting class from Michigan. Kentucky, we already know Hagens and Maxie are gone. Uh, we'll see about Richards quickly, but great recruiting class number one in the country. Virginia, uh, Kihei Clark, uh, Huff, um, and uh, uh, Hauser, now eligible. They were playing really well at the end. Duke, I'm expecting Vernon Carey hasn't announced yet as we're taping or as we're doing this, but already lost Stanley and Trey Jones. But again, great recruiting class. Got to go with the pedigree. Michigan State, unbelievable wings. Got to see who's going to make sure that who becomes that leader at the point for them without Winston. And does Tillman stay in the draft? Rutgers, once they got Cliff Amarui, um, Baker, Harper, Miles Johnson. I love this team. I think they're going to be really good. Carolina, that's a lot of faith here. Don't know about Cole Anthony yet, but I still think with the recruiting. Tennessee, the core of this group is back. They played well late, being Florida and Kentucky. Rick Barnes on the podcast. Texas Tech, once again, if everyone comes back, really good team. West Virginia, same thing with uh, Shabway, uh, Oscar Shabway and, and Culver. If they get all these guys back, great front court. UCLA, yes, they lost Chris Smith. But Tiger Campbell, good recruiting class. They now buy into Mick Cronin. I really like that squad. San Diego State, Malachi Flynn, uh, Matt Mitchell picked up the Northridge transfer. They're going to be able to score and defend. Illinois, Kofi Coburn, does he stay in this? Does he stay in the NBA draft? Big question. They lost Alan Griffin to Syracuse. That is certainly a, uh, a hit for them. Um, but Georgie Pashanisvili, Demonte Williams, Trent Frazier, um, you know, Ayo Desumu is the big question. If he's gone for good, then yes, I'd have to drop him out. But I still believe in the Illini. Texas, core group back, and they finish strong. Oregon, never dismiss the Ducks. It's a different roster all the time. But Will Richardson's back. They got the Rutgers big man transfer. Um, Eugene Omaruri. So, um, you know, I expect them to be right there again, even though Peyton Pritchard was a major factor for them. Louisville. Um, getting the Radford transfer, Carly Jones. Uh, they've got um, uh, Williams and, and Johnson coming back. So uh, I feel pretty good about the Cardinals. Richmond, look, Gilliard and Golden, uh, and one other guy, one other player, all declared. Um, but I think they're just flirting. They're not going to stay. So they could have their top five, their starting five back. They're going to be the favorite in the A-10. Oklahoma. Um, could have one of the, with, re, uh, with, with Manic leading them, they'll have uh, a great one-two punch, and Oklahoma's going to be right there in the Big 12. Houston, let's see what happens with Quentin Grimes. Uh, Stanford, Oscar Da Silva, just talked to him. You know, Terrell Terry, does he stay in the draft? Dejan Davis, he's back. So, But I love Da Silva, and I think Cardinal won't be a surprise. They'll be right there in the thick of it. Florida, gr- huge news with Scotty Lewis coming back. We'll see what Keontae Johnson and Andrew Nemhard do. So I think Florida will be going to be right there. Oklahoma State with Kate Cunningham. Uh, core of their group is back. You get the number one player in the country. Indiana, you know, see what Trace Jackson Davis does. Al Durham, Justin Smith, Rob Finnessy. There's enough pieces that the Hoosiers should be a top 36 type team. Providence lost a lot of seniors. But Bynum is going to be their new point guard. He was a transfer from St. Joe's. Duke, Reeves, Watson, they got a good core to be a top four Big East team. Purdue, lost Matt Harms. Travion Williams now will be a star. Can the guard play pick it up? If so, I think they'll be right there. Utah, I really like this Utah team. Ryland Jones, Huth Gotch, uh, Timmy Allen, going to be a strong Ute team from the start. Ohio State, 
maybe this is a little generous because they just lost, lost Luther Muhammad and Caleb Wesson declared, but there's still a good core there for the Buckeyes. And St. Louis, once again, if their core all returns, they're going to be a team that's going to be right there in the Atlantic 10. Who do I leave out? Thought hard about USC, SMU, um, UConn, new to the Big East, Arkansas, Auburn, LSU in the SEC, uh, in the ACC, NC State, in the, in the, um, trying to think of the leagues, uh, BYU out of the WCC, thought about them. Um, you can see my list at the bottom of our NCAA.com column for all the other teams, Memphis, Tulsa, out of the American, other teams that I was really wrestling with, whether or not I should put them into this list. All right. A lot of people have time at home. So let's go to some questions. Um, all right. So Anthony Williams, Illinois saying, you know, they're probably going to lose IO. And if they do, I said, if they lose IO, then yes, I would have to drop them up. Uh, oh, Rob says, quit sleeping on Cincinnati. Claim I didn't give them enough credit during the season. That's fine. And they were another one that I thought about. Maybe I should, maybe I will put them in there. Um, Josh Hauser, any relation? Uh, finally saying someone giving Creighton some love. All right. Got them in the top five. Um, Nate Will Widow likes to see the Tennessee's back in the mix. Uh, depending on what happens with Kentucky, I, I wouldn't be shocked if Tennessee ends up as the favorite in the SEC. Jonathan McClary wants to know how Syracuse gets back. Well, let's see what that Syracuse roster looks like at the end of all of this shakedown, and maybe they'll be in this mix. We've got to see. But losing Elijah Hughes, not great, but Alan Griffin coming in, obviously, is great for them. Um, Donna Williams, Duke at number 11. Okay? I'm giving a lot of faith right now in their class and the fact that we just have not heard yet from Vernon Carey. So technically, he's on that roster. So I got to just deal with what I know in this snapshot of time. Yes, they could certainly move down. Uh, Ted Rifkin, Wisco, everyone coming back in a full year for Micah Potter. Greg Gard, yes, he's high on the Badgers. So am I, obviously. Um, Jeremy Rittenauer, Virginia's got a lot of scores coming in, going to be hard to handle. No question about it. The Cavaliers are going to be right there with Florida State. We'll see about Duke and Carolina. It's kind of the same characters at the top of the ACC. Brent Griffin says, where's Auburn? Okay, here's the thing with Auburn. Isaac Okoru, looks like he's staying in the draft. You lose Samir Dowdy, Wiley, and Austin Wiley, um, and D'Angelo Pur Purifoy. Uh, so I don't doubt Bruce Pearl's ability to get their team back up. Good recruiting class. They're going to work the transfer market. But based on what they have lost at this moment, it was hard for me to put them above some of these other teams. Um, Steve Kent, I came into the feed late. What was said about Villanova? What was said is, really good core. Talked to Colin Gillespie. He feels really good about this group, especially the guys sitting out, led by Brian Antoine, the newcomers coming in, uh, Jermaine Samuels. They're going to have good experience. You know, I think they expect to lose Sadiq Bay, and we'll see about Jeremiah Robinson Earl. Sam Eddington, Musselman's going to resurrect Arkansas basketball. They were one of my bubble teams here. Uh, Mark Pete says, UNC with a question mark? Well, right now, Cole Anthony and Garrison Brooks, these guys are on the roster. So uh, Mike Perini, Michigan top 10, he's laughing. Um, Isaiah Livers, I'm not convinced he's going to stay in the draft. And I watched this Michigan team in person multiple times. I really like their rotation guys. If the newcomers come in and give them that star power, you know, I mean, just look at Wagner. I know they lost to Julius, but that's okay. Eli Brooks, Wagner, the Bigs and Rivers and Castleton, um, Brandon Johns. Uh, I, I feel good about the Wolverines. Frankie Keplinger, any chance Matt Harms goes to Gonzaga? Well, here's the deal with Harms. If Harms, I'm going to throw this out to everyone here, if you're watching up in uh, Spokane. Sell, you could sell Matt Harms on being like that Bill Walton role for the 86 Celtics. Okay. This is what you sell Harms on. You sell Harms if you want him. Phil Petrusif is back. And then Harms comes in as that sixth man splitting the time. Then you've got an 86 Celtics type front court with Petrusif, 
and Kispert and Timmy, and then you bring off the bench, uh, Matt Harms, you know, or Matt Harms goes where he's a starter and a star. It depends what he wants. Does he want to get the minutes? Does he want to get his production way up? Or does he want to win a championship? Um, now there's a lot of teams on my list here in the top 10 where he could go and help win a championship. He could go a little deeper than that. But, um, I like, you know, Gonzaga's had a lot of foreign guys. So that's why I, you know, that's why I went a little deeper in Gonzaga because I could see that. Uh, all right. Let's say uh, Ashley Dieterman here says, if everyone comes back, how dominant will Iowa be? Well, I think they will be the team to beat in the Big Ten. That's how dominant. Um, let's see here. Um, just refreshing the comments. Oh, yes. Jennifer Hamlin. Forgot about Omar Bala. He's back for Gonzaga. So their bigs are going to be deep, deep set of bigs. Thank you for reminding me about him. I forgot he sat out for a moment there. Uh, all right, let's go. Mark Pete, Memphis, not in the top 25. Well. Let's assume Precious Achua is gone. Uh, I did have Memphis as one of my bubble teams. So if you look at NCAA.com, they're listening. They're, they're listed there. Um, yes, that's true, Frankie, about who uh, Harms would have to compete with. All right, Mike Craig. Why did the NCAA not have next year's tourney games back in the cities that lost out holding the tourney in their city this year? So here's the reasoning. Because these things are set for years to come. Uh, where other cities have bid, they've prepared for it. So you can't just bump those other cities out of next year's rotation. Um, they've already probably done signage, marketing, uh, no tickets yet, but it, it just wouldn't be fair to those respective cities to suddenly bounce them out of the rotation. The earliest Atlanta, and I would be shocked if it doesn't happen, but the earliest Atlanta can get the Final Four back is 2027. That's when I fully expect Atlanta to get the final four again because that's the next turn in the rotation. Um okay, Scott Baylor King, where do I think Jordan Bruner's gonna go? I don't know, but I really like his game and watched him. I was did one of the last games of the season uh in New Haven. So I, I think that uh he's gonna help someone right away. And the Ivy League, look, we're not gonna change the Ivy League by spouting about it, but the Ivy League's gotta get with the program, okay? They've got to deal more with student athlete welfare. And this is a once in a generation situation. This has not happened on the planet since 1917, 1918. Okay. So we have not had a global pandemic since then. You would think the Ivy League would grant spring sports athletes a chance to come back, but it didn't happen. Um, and Ivy League players don't have that opportunity to redshirt or come back for that fifth year. It's four to play four. Um, and players, we've seen this before, if they get hurt, they'll actually will leave the institution and come back because you can't be in school actually as a student more than four years. You can go stretch that out, but you had to disappear for a year. And so the Ivy League's got to just stop being so archaic in that. Uh, because they've got talent. People want to be at these Ivy institutions. And by the way, you got to pay. Wouldn't you want maybe a fifth year of, of tuition, especially now? You wouldn't want that? Come on, Ivy League. Get with it. So you're losing too many good players. Uh, Sam Sokolowski, no UConn. It's kind of crazy. Uh, well, UConn was on my list as one of the schools that I thought about. Uh, nearby Rhode Island as well. Um, so in the A-10, I had them as one of the – and Dayton. Got to see what happens with Dayton's roster, but more than likely it's going to get gutted at least in the middle, but I have a lot of faith in Anthony Graham. Um, best freshman coming in, as we know, Steven Danko. Well, I mean, I, you know, I credit a lot of the, the recruiters out there, the analysts I used to for years early in my career was out at all those events. I haven't done that recently in the last few years. Um, so I look to their guidance. And if Cade Cunningham is looked at as the best one, I mean, I've seen him just, but not in person. So I will go with Cade Cunningham. Those uh, recruiting analysts do an outstanding job. Um, 
especially the ones at uh, 24, two, 247 uh, Recruiting. I think they have a great website. Uh, a little shout out to them. Evan Daniels does an outstanding job. All these different um, analysts that really canvas the country. So, uh, you know, I, I don't doubt their, their ranking system in that regard. Uh, Katie, Brookshire, Dayton is great. We have faith in Coach Grant. So do I. Um, I think he will, uh, there's no question. So Scott King says, will Jordan Bruder go from Yale to Baylor? What's the Yale Baylor? Uh, you know, Makai Mason. Um, suddenly Baylor is the second destination for Yale. Who knew? Uh, Maria LePage wants to know about Seton Hall. Well, let's see if they get Bryce Aiken. Um, if they get Bryce Aiken and then, um, Mamu comes back, uh, you know, Kevin Willard will have them in the mix. I just got to wait and see what that roster looks like. Annie, uh, Annie, um, Majoros or Maharos says it's going to be Rutgers year. I hope Rutgers gets into the NCAA tournament because it would have been the first time since 91 that it didn't happen. Penn State, on the other hand, is going to have a lot of work to do without Stevens and Watkins. Um, but Myron Jones talked to him uh, on uh, Tuesday. I fully expect, um, you know, have a good shot to, to get them. Certainly in postseason contention, we'll see if it's NIT and NCAA. Ryan Rogers, how strong will the Big, Big 12 be next year? Well, Ryan, look what I've got here. Baylor. Kansas, Texas Tech, West Virginia, Oklahoma, Oklahoma State. That's half the league. Pretty good. All right. Uh, Luke Driscoll, any chance Sadiq Bay returns? Sure, there's a chance. Um, this is a year like we've never seen. You're going to see over 100 players declare for the draft. I don't think they're going to all, you know, the percentage, it, it may be half of that. Maybe I'm being naive here, but the longer this drags out that we don't know the deadlines, I think more players are going to get antsy. Um, because the other difference is, let's see what kind of money is being dished out by agents here. Agents may not be able to promise the kind of money that they had, you know, as late as last year because their revenue has been cut because of what may happen with NBA salaries. So how much are you going to dish out to a marginal first round, second round player to keep that player afloat as you wait to see what's happening? That's why I think that a lot of these players <clears throat> may, may end up saying, I'm going to go back. Um, Dustin asked about the Vernon Carey. Yeah, well, if he comes back, it's a different story. Sam says, what about Northern Iowa? Um yeah, A.J. Graves comes back, um, thought about them, good point, got upset in the Missouri Valley. They they will probably enter the Valley as the uh, favorite next season. Let's see what else we got. Um, so it's a good question on Northern Iowa, thank you. Let's take, uh, we'll go for another two minutes here. Um, appreciate all the comments and everything. Uh Don Atkins says West Virginia is going to be loaded. So I want to make sure I kept them in. Uh, Eddie, I got to see what happens with Arizona State. I got to look at their roster. Mark says, do you think college basketball will start in January instead of November? I hope not. So I'm going to be positive. I'm going to be, I'm going to hope it doesn't. I'm going to hope it starts in November as is. Um, all right, let's go for another minute here. Let's take us here. Um, Dustin Carolyn says, who's going to be the player of the year? Well, entering the season, it's an overriding favorite of Luca Garza. Can he, if he comes back, and I think he will based on my conversation with him, if he can duplicate what he did last season, which is never easy, he's the overwhelming favorite to be the national player of the year. Um, Ryan Rogers loves Oklahoma State. We'll see. Um, let's take two more if we can here. Andrews, oh, a lot of Iowa fans, you guys are very active. Does Iowa have a legit shot at the Final Four? Um, yes, they do. This is going to be the year to be in Iowa City for sure. Uh, and I'll tell you again, 
the Big Ten, the Big East, and the Big 12, I think, will dominate. Uh, and depending on roster configuration, I feel pretty good about the Pac-12. Uh, the ACC is going to be top-heavy again. That's a big question mark. We'll see. So, um, John Belasco says, can Providence stay hot? Isaiah Anderson asked about Bob Huggins. Hopefully next year, we're talking to this time, he's in the Hall of Fame. I hope Huggs gets in. All right. Appreciate everything. Check out our podcast, March Madness 365. Interviews with Corey Kispert from the number one ranked Gonzaga Bulldogs in the Power 36. Interview with Marcus Garrett, Naismith Defensive Player of the Year from number seven, Kansas. Interview with Florida State Head Coach Leonard Hamilton, number 14. Interview with Rick Barnes from Tennessee, number 16. Check all that out at the March Madness 365 podcast. Appreciate it. We're going to keep giving you content during this shutdown, during the entire offseason like we've been doing every week for the last three years that we have revamped the March Madness accounts. Okay, we are entering now year four of providing all the content for you here at March Madness on all our social media handles and NCAA.com. We love it. We love the engagement. Appreciate all of your votes in our March Madness moments that we did over the last three weeks uh, to help us keep the time without the NCAA tournament. I'm confident. I'm optimistic. Listen to Dr. Fauci. Hopefully things will get back to a new normal and we'll have college basketball in the fall. We'll have students on campus in the fall. Hopefully it all happens. Be safe, everyone, and we'll talk soon.